where the olfactory glia are. So where you see green is where the glial cells will be. Now, I'll just go through why I think that the glial cells are different. Here, this is a schematic of the olfactory system here. When the nerve cells here send the axon, axons up into the olfactory bulb, first of all, those nerve bundles are fasciculated and surrounded by... So here's an example using dorsal of ganglion neurons, we've done this with brain neurons as well, uh, that if you have OECs present, not only do we get much more axon outgrowth, but the culture is also incredibly clean. If we look at the olfactory epithelium, so basically what you could feel inside your nose and just underneath, uh, what we see there is uh, the cell bodies first of the olfactory neurons, then right sticking up, this is the inside of the nose here, if you could imagine it, and then the axons go down, you can't see the axons so well, but they do go down into the lamina propria. And then we turn on the red fluorescent light to see the red cells. We have glial cells down here, none up here. And if we merge them together, this is what we see. But now, the next picture, we're going to go further down into actual olfactory nerve fascicles. And the external debris is turning blue, strangely enough, but yes, that's the case. So over time, this debris does end up inside the olfactory and sheath cells. We also explore 12 to 20 weeks. So, this is serious, very serious illness. Uh, what happens is you get first a flu like uh, illness, which can uh, progress to acute septic illness, and sometimes, but not always, you get CNS involvement. Particularly in the Australian variant, we do get a lot of CNS involvement. Uh, what happens then is you get a disease which is similar to encephalitis, encephalitis, and it affects the brain stem. So, we have severe. CNS symptoms, particularly in the Australian variant. And our question is, how does this get into the central nervous system?